In this video, I'm going to give you some tips for facilitating the climate action simulation. But before I begin, I want to remind you of the different types of roles that a facilitator kind of has to play anytime you're leading an inroads event, but in particular when you're leading the climate action simulation. First, there's the role of the coach. You're kind of supporting your participants, encouraging them along. Professor, you're sharing insights about inroads and that kind of thing. Playwright, in particular, here from the climate action simulation, you're role playing. Um, so you're acting and getting into different different characters. And then the final, the fourth role is fellow traveler. Sometimes things come up that are unexpected. You're dealing with this big challenge of climate change. Sometimes it can be intense and you're just along for the ride. Um, so to look at, in particular, the climate action simulation, let's talk about the different elements of the before, the during, and the after of the game. So beforehand, first, practice. Practice leading events with inroads, just practice making sure you have a good feel for all the logistics. Then, you know, prepare your room and your virtual setup, do whatever it takes to kind of set things up just so that the everything is just right for, for your event. And then third, if you can, give participants a sense of what to expect. If you know who's going to show up, send them the briefing statements in advance, that kind of thing. And then finally, if you're working with any co-facilitators or assistants, make sure you establish clear roles ahead of time. Who's going to do what and when? It'll make everything go much smoother when the game is actually getting played. So during the event, there are several different kind of roles. Continuing forward with that theme, um, uh, that I just mentioned. So first, as a fellow traveler, you're playing yourself. At the very beginning, you welcome your audience. At, during the debrief, you're dealing with all the emotions that come up. Um, the second role, the UN Secretary General role. This is important. This person initiates the gameplay, they motivate action, and they really focus on keeping the group dynamics headed towards that goal of limiting warming below two degrees. You can play this role, or maybe you have a co-facilitator play this role. The third thing is the lead scientist. Uh, again, this could be a separate role or you might be playing all the roles. Um, so this is the person that uses inroads. They discuss the model dynamics and talk about what's going on when we add these different interventions in. And finally, the fourth role is the host. This is the person kind of working through all the different logistics, particularly in an online setting. They're the person who's uh, looking at the chat, uh, managing the breakout rooms, all of those kinds of things. So now let's look at the different components of the game. But And before I do that, just as a reminder, we want to create a space where both the facilitators and the participants can improvise. Sometimes unexpected things happen. You're role playing. Just get into character and have fun with it. The more you do that, the more the rest of your participants will too. Looking at the first piece, after kind of the opening introduction from the UN Secretary General, you have your groups go into their round one team meetings. The thing to focus on as a facilitator during this period is making sure that people are oriented to what their role is and what their team's priorities are. So you might have to kind of provide some coaching and support to tell people, okay, you're playing the conventional energy group. So these are the kinds of things that you're interested in or whatever it may be. Then uh, when you get to the speeches and going through the inroads results in that first round, make sure you're reminding people in those speeches to identify the reasoning uh, for their positions. A lot of times I've seen people will just get up and they'll just read the things on their sheet and then they'll sit back down. But really encourage them if you have the time and they haven't spoken for too long, you wanna also make sure, keep, keep track of time, um, why they, they chose the positions that they did and any equity considerations. Then when you're introducing the um, impact of the per particular intervention that they've suggested in inroads, explain again why it happened. Why did you see the temperature change a little or a lot? Um, this is where I come back to some of the tips that um, Drew offered us in an earlier video when, when he was discussing how to describe an inroads scenario. So there's one, just restating what the team leader has proposed. Two, interpreting how that fits within inroads. Then asking people to mentally simulate, thinking about what impact they think it might have before you actually do it. Then you do it, you simulate uh, what happens, you replay the change and you point people to where they see the different changes. And then 
describe um, any kind of near-term effects that you might notice or any long-term effects. Talk again, explain why, help people understand what's going on here uh, within the simulator. And then finally, if any co-benefits or equity considerations weren't mentioned in the uh, team leader's speech, mention them yourself, mention them here. Then as we think then to the second round, um, during the second round, you're gonna in really focus on encouraging the negotiations among the groups. Now that the groups have seen the other players and which positions they're taking, you can say, you can kind of stir the pot and say, hey, why don't you go talk to that group um, and encourage more interaction among the groups. And then also when you get to the speeches and the modeling results in this section, uh, I'd say the speeches can be a little shorter uh, just to save time. Again, you know, if you're working with a lot of time, then allow them to be long. This is a, it, it could be a really fun part of it. And then also continue to explain inroads dynamics after each slide or move. We don't want inroads to appear as a black box where people don't understand why they, why things happen. And they just say, well, the simulator said so. Um, really, you know, take the time to, to explore why things are changing and answer any questions. Then when you get to the debrief, after you've created your simulation and the role playing has wrapped up, a couple things to keep in mind here. In the debrief, we really like to create a space for personal reflection and to draw out insights. During the debrief, it can be okay for there to be a wide range of reactions. And you might even say it, remind people that there is no correct way to feel. People can be coming to the climate change issue from a lot of different perspectives. And it can be important to acknowledge that. Also. Let, their, let people share their thoughts and feelings before you jump in and respond. Maybe take responses from several people before you jump in and say something immediately. Let people kind of explore and be able to work through things as a group without um, getting a response every single time. But I would say this, um, when you're closing out at the end of the debrief, if it hasn't happened naturally already, find a way to close with a sense of hope, sense of possibility. Um, you as a facilitator have a lot of ability to kind of shape that kind of final note and um, leaving with some, you know, uh, next step of action that can be taken or some anecdote about why uh, we can take action on climate change or why there are possibilities out there that may, may even though they may be hard, can be particularly powerful. Then, after your event, um, send a follow-up email to your audience providing any resources for further action. This is particularly important if you're doing a, uh, a, uh, an event for the public. Um, obviously, if you're working with students and you're in touch with them every week, then your follow-up will fit, fit your audience occur accordingly. Um, also, thank any assistants who helped with the logistics of during the event. That's always important. And then finally, please, please, please register your event on the Climate Interactive website. Our team at Climate Interactive works really hard to give you all these top quality resources to support you in running events. And it's really helpful for us to know uh, when you have run them. And then finally, if you have any further questions or you're interested in seeing all of this written out, check out the Climate Action Simulation Facilitator Guide. A lot of what I've just covered um, is written out in there. And so you can use that as a reference and you can find that on our website. Thanks and uh, have fun out there. Take care.